Hey everyone, it's uh, March 25th, Wednesday, March 25th, and it's uh, another gorgeous day, and uh, what a weird time we're in. Hey, this month is flying by, and uh, I just want to encourage you again with the, with the uh, truth that God is with us, that he is greater than anything in this world, bigger than any uh, obstacle we might face. We don't need to be afraid. We need to be cautious. We need to be careful. We need to be smart. But we do not need to be terrified. And uh, I want you to live with peace in your heart, um, uh, to know that you're not alone, to know that our great God loves us and he has things under control. Uh, I'm going to uh, continue on with my interview with our elders, and I'm going to check in here with uh, uh, Nathan Rush and Fred Chelstead. So, uh, here we go. All right. Good afternoon, uh, Nathan and Fred. Good to see you guys here today. And uh, you're safely, safely tucked in your homes, quarantined in your homes. Um, how's that going? How's that going in your houses these days? Well, as you can see, I'm in the, uh, the classroom here. Look behind oh, me there. That's Penny's little desk there. Perfect. So this is the homeschooling. It used to be my office. It's not anymore. Now it's the homeschooling classroom. Where are the kids right now? They're downstairs uh, watching shows or something. <laughs> something. Just something distract them. Educational. Yeah. 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 Good. And is, how's it working out with all you guys being together? Because you had kids that were in, how many kids were in school? Just the two oldest. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, it's been it's been pretty seamless so far that they're loving it so i think they're a pretty good age for it right now it's um yeah they're not too stressed out about it they're just having fun yeah, being yeah. at home the, the two girls they're, they're each other's best friends so oh that's awesome they're just happy and then the little guy he's used to being at home alone with with me working in the office and him having to play by himself most of the time so it's he's weird. actually happy <laughs> about the quarantine this is the best time of his life his sisters are home to play with every day so he's doing great. How about you, Fred? It's, uh, we've been staying inside a lot. And uh, I'd, uh, I'd just like to take this opportunity to say uh, a, a bit about who I am. Uh, uh, I'm uh, married to Vivian, or Grandma Viv, as the preschoolers know her, her around church. And we have three grown daughters and their families, one in Edmonton, one in Calgary and one lives just outside uh, Sylvan Lake here. And just so that you understand where I'm coming from, within our family, we've got a huge variety of, uh, uh, of situations. We've got uh, one, uh, uh, one person who's uh, unemployed, two people working from home. We have a nurse, uh, one of our daughters is a nurse. Uh, one of our uh, son-in-laws is, uh, is working in the trades and he's still able to work fortunately and uh, we have a daughter who is a stay-at-home mom and who's taking some advanced courses at uh, at a seminary so uh, it's a wide variety of, of situations that yeah, yeah. exist within our family so I can appreciate where a lot of people are coming from and how how their family situation uh, exists yeah. so so my comments are couched from, from that point of view. Nice. Um, so what's God been saying to you lately? I mean, like this whole thing is affecting everybody, right? And in one sense, uh, some percentage of the world just is just continuing to go on. Life goes on. But we can't deny that this has been a huge rock in the pool. And so how is it, uh, how is, what is Jesus saying to you during these days, Fred? I think that uh, what Jesus and God have been saying to me is uh, to count my blessings and uh, uh, reminding me of the many things that I'm thankful for mm. and should be, for, should be thankful for and am thankful for. And so I'm thankful to God for the hope that we have in him. Uh, that's, I think, most of all. And I thank, uh, I thank him for the peace that I have through all this turmoil because I have an amazing piece that with uh, with the rockiness of the uh, stock markets they're like yo-yos with the pandemic with the economic situation with all of this going on around us uh, uh, I'm I, ha I have a piece that 
is just uh, not for myself. Uh, that's for sure. And I thank God for his, uh, the encouragement through his word. Uh, so those are some things that I'm thankful for. And I, How about you, Nathan? What's Jesus saying to you these days? Um, I think, I mean, it's kind of a continuation for me um, of what he's been speaking to me over the last month. Uh, we were just diving into the capital campaign. Oh, here's my little guy. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> you might just hang out there. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, we were just diving into the capital campaign and, and uh, really spending a lot of time praying and, and thinking about that. And um, at the time, really felt like uh, the Lord speaking to me about our church and about how he wanted to do something uh, big in the hearts of the people of our church. Uh. Um, that he had, uh, the, the word that I had heard from him at the time, we were having uh, the all church prayer meeting and I felt like he was saying that um, he had no intention of just transporting our church group from one building to another, but he wanted us to be so radically changed in the process. Wow. That it would look like a, a different group entirely. Um, and I think that, you know, as he continued to speak to me about that through the, the weeks here, it's, it's, it's all about our hearts, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, that's that's ultimately what he wants. He wants our hearts. That's and awesome. so, yeah, I think, um, I mean, there's other little things that have come out of it with this isolation and the, um, my job kind of being put on hold right now. Um, yeah, I guess I'd call myself unemployed maybe at the moment, yeah. basically. Um, there's just not a lot going on in, in real estate right now. But uh, yeah, I was talking to a family member this week and, and just talking about how you know, what do we put our security in, right? Um, and, and these sort of trials really highlight those things in our life and highlight how, you know, maybe our security is in our finances, in our job, um, and it shouldn't be. It should be in, in, our, in our Savior. Um, so, yeah, it's, uh, that's what God's been speaking to me recently and just sort of continuing on with that. Um, I think that he wants to do big work in the yeah. heart of the people of our church, even through this. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen in the future with the capital campaign or where we're going to go or when we're going to pick that up. But um, I mean, I can't imagine that, you know, let's say six months from now, everything starts going back to normal. I, I don't know if that's what's going to happen. But, uh, and then we, uh, and then we were to look at doing something like the, the capital campaign starting up again with the situation that everybody's in at that time where, where their finances are not going to look right as, as they did, you know, a few months ago. Um, and what a challenge that would be. Yeah. But, but I think, you know, God, he wants our hearts, right. And our, our hearts are often tied to our, our finances and um, our health. Yeah. Things like that. And uh, I just, yeah, I think Ryan was saying um, the other day when you interviewed him, what an opportunity comes with this and I think the same thing I'm just I'm really praying for uh for our church uh just our church body as well as the the capital C church the worldwide church that that yeah. there would be revival that people would be um just drawn to to give their hearts fully to to Jesus through this time man I love what you're saying about us being transformed that that God gave you that picture of he's not going to just transform this the same community that was here into this other building that actually there's going to be a huge trans transformation. And that's definitely happening. Right. I see things of like, um, um, you know, our value on community. Like, I think we're all feeling it right now that we can't have that kind of community. It's like, Oh, wait a minute. I actually really, really like that. And then to find ways to connect and to be, to grow and grow in our faith. Yet you're right. Whenever our finances come into play, it does affect our faith in big ways. And that's going to, that's going to happen a lot over this next little while. Like people are, I think you can feel like, I don't know what's happening. I got to cling to all my money. I just got to cling to everything right now. Right. And uh, what do you, what's your thoughts on that? I think that the, the precepts that, uh, that we live by have to, uh, have to continue on and that giving has to continue. Now it may be at a different amount. Yeah. But again, as Nathan said, it's, it's the condition of your heart. It's not the condition of your pocketbook. Uh, the condition of your pocketbook will maybe dictate the amount. However, it's your heart that uh, determines that 
it will continue. Yeah. And it will continue in a way that God leads you. And, and so uh, clinging, clinging to material things, I think, uh, has, has been shown through all of this to be a worthless exercise. And it's, uh, it's God and Jesus and our families and our church that uh, are, are really important to us. And the, uh, the amount of money that we have in our bank account is, is something that uh, is, yeah, we need something, but uh, that's not where we place our hope. And that's not where we place, uh, place the, the importance of, of our existence. Yeah, that's good. I, I'm really personally trying to take it serious. You know, I've got all this extra time now. Um, at home with the kids, and uh, I'm trying to pour into the word and pour into prayer. I, I don't really don't want us to miss this opportunity. I yeah. just think it's it's so key right now this time um, for us personally, for us as a church, um, for the the non-believers in our community that are going to be looking for for answers for hope. Um, yeah, it's just such a key time right now that I really I really hope that uh, I, I'm trying to do it personally, trying to take it serious and um, yeah, spend that time in prayer and um, be listening to what God's speaking to me and, and not just in my prayer time, but when I am the odd time you do get to interact with somebody, which isn't a lot right now. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, just trying to be really aware of what, what the, the spirit is saying to me and, and how he would have me interact with people and um, being able to offer that hope to people. It's awesome. Well, thanks so much, you guys. Thanks for taking the time out of your busy schedules. <laughs> Just really appreciate it and uh, appreciate your guys' leadership and your friendship. Um, I just feel very, very fortunate to have an elders team like with you guys on it. So God bless you. Have a great afternoon and uh, we'll see you or something or not see you soon. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. Thanks, Thank you. yeah, that was good. Those are good guys and uh, great to connect with them and said lots of good stuff about, um, about uh, digging deeper into the word and being thankful and prayer and, um, uh, and to, to continue to be generous. If you are wanting to give, uh, we're going to get a lockbox set up at the church that you can drop off a check, uh, your tithe or whatever you'd like to give. Um, and that'll be checked every day. So we won't leave that overnight. Um, also, you can give online. Go to uh, alliancecommunity.ca. And there's a, a button there you can click, uh, Rebel Give. That's what we do. Jennifer and I give um, online. And uh, it just, social distancing is built right in. So thanks for considering that. Um, boy, proud of you guys. Love you. And uh, look forward to talking to you tomorrow. Bye-bye. <music>